Hey guys, welcome back to Intermittent Technology, and today I wanted to discuss something different with you. This video will be about Sony, or rather Magic's Vegas Pro 14, and we'll be doing, uh, we'll be looking at four different topics. The first is, uh, don't worry, I'll put this there in post. <laughs> So the first is my old i7-4770K versus my new Ryzen system and see how that influences rendering time. And then we'll take a look at uh, build 201, which I've been using for the longest time, versus a new build which recently was released, build 252, and see if there's maybe any differences between those. In the second part of the video, we'll be taking a look at the best Kodak to use for exporting. And most often I find people using the main concept uh, export method. But in my testing and in my experience, uh, using the Sony XAVC-S long codec, it's a mouthful, actually yields better results, renders faster, and gives you a higher quality file. So we'll take a look at that, and we'll also be tackling the topic of CPU versus GPU rendering. So most uh, Premiere Premier Pro users use GPU rendering, but Sony's method of doing things is a bit different. You can enable some forms of GPU accelerations. There's actually multiple spots you can use it in Sony or Magic's Vegas Pro. Still haven't gotten used to that. Um, but enabling those at different points does different things. And that is also the reason why if you look at certain videos on the internet, some people will tell you GPU rendering doesn't make a difference, while others will show you GPU, GPU rendering makes a big difference. So I'll be discussing that in part two. So let's, uh, let's move on the slide. So first we have the Intel 4770K versus the Ryzen 1700X. And the reason why this is important or interesting is the 4770K is a recent Intel CPU. It's a bit older, but uh, IPC hasn't changed that much since the Haswell CPUs. But the Ryzen chip is an eight core with 16 threads CPU. So that would mean if IPC would be the same and the clock speed would be the same, you would have double the performance. But can Sony Vegas Pro use that performance? That's of course the big question. So uh, I did these tests using build 201 because I didn't have any other build available at the time. So let's see how that did. And people who watched my Ryzen videos, I'll have a card up here with my Ryzen stock memory and overclock video and benchmarks. They'll already have seen this slide, but let's take a look. Okay, so here are the results. I'll be looking at the screen because I have to, you know, <laughs> see the results myself. So using, let's start with without a GPU, we see that the stock 4770K take, uh, does one hour to render this scene. And I'm using my Road to Ryzen case and cooler video. You can look it up on my channel so you can see what effects are in there, etc. Et so overclocking the 4770K to 4.5 gigahertz shaves off about 10 minutes of render time. So that's worth it. And so we move to the stock Ryzen 1700X and we see that the render time is 48 minutes. That's a big improvement from the one hour. If we then overclock only the memory to 2933, it becomes 46 minutes. And if we then overclock the CPU to 4 gigahertz and the memory to 2933 megahertz, we see render time becoming 42 minutes. So that's a pretty big improvement from one hour to 40 minutes almost. If we then render the same video but with with gpu accelerations the numbers change a lot but the the order stays the same so we see the stock 4770k taking about uh, 30 minutes to render the video 
but the overclocked and uh, memory and CPU version of the Ryzen only takes 16 minutes. So that's half of what the Intel system did. And that's one quarter of what it, it was running using CPU on the older Intel system. So does Ryzen help in Vegas Pro or having eight cores basically? Well, the answer is yes. Vegas can use most of the power that's available in the cores. And jumping the gun a little bit, does GPU rendering help in Vegas? Yes and no. <laughs> Makes it a bit confusing. But as I said, it's very dependent on um, what you do in your editing and in your videos. But that's for part two. So let's move on. Okay, so I was using build 201 and then I switched to build 252. And does that make any difference in rendering times? So let's start with main concept 1080p, the internet preset. And we see that in, on build 201 using GPU acceleration in both Vegas and in the rendering preset, it basically just crashed. I gave it two times, it crashed two times, it failed. In build 252, they must have improved something because it took 23 minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. This is, by the way, a different video. This is the, the party 15 2017 video of the behind the scenes look. You can uh, click the card up above to view that video and see what effects are in there. And as I, get, as I said in part two, I'll explain why some things do become faster and some things don't. So moving on to the main concept 1080p, no GPU. We see that in build 201, it doesn't crash. It takes 22 minutes. And in build 252, it actually becomes a little bit faster, but I think that's in the margin of errors. And it finishes in 2149. Moving to 4K, all the import footage is 4K, but in build 201, main concept couldn't render 4K. So that's why I only have 1080p results here. In part two, we will look at 4K results for main concepts because it was introduced in build 252. So for now, the uh, XAVC-S is used in build 201 and 252 to compare. Looking at GPU, well, we see half a minute difference, but that's again in the margins of errors. So it's about the same speed. And looking at the no GPU result for XAVC-S long 4K, we see about a minute improvement. But again, that's close to uh, the margin of error. So what have we learned in this part? Using an 8-core or a Ryzen CPU brings a lot of performance to Vegas. So if you're looking to build a system right now, I can wholeheartedly re recommend getting an AMD Ryzen CPU, especially because newer builds will probably have more optimizations, so it can only get better. And looking at the newer build, rendering times didn't become that much faster. There were some gains here and there, maybe. But as always, they'll have bug fixes, so I can advise always to get the latest build from the manufacturer, or the software developer in this case. Okay, that's it for part one. Leave any comments or questions if you have down, them down below, if you want me to do some other tests, and I'll try and get back to you. If you like the video, give it a like. If you think, okay, get to the good part, where's part two? Just wait until the end and it'll go to part two automatically. So, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.